Hello everyone. So um, I decided to do a quick tutorial on um, a website called iNaturalist.org in order to show you how simple it is for those of you who are doing projects that do focus on aquatic animals or have any sort of reference to uh, fish, wildlife that are near or on or within your waterway. Um, just to give you an overview, iNaturalist is a citizen science website, which means that people, everyday people here in New York City, uh, what they do is they download the app, they sign up for free, and they sign up on this side here. And what they do is they just observe. So if they happen to be out and about near a waterway or just anywhere in New York City, and they happen to see a certain animal, a certain fish, a certain type of plant, they can actually record that sighting on this website. And this is not just limited to New York City, it is something that is uh, available to people across the world. So um, just bear in mind that if you do share this or you do use this as your resource, which you are more than welcome to do, you do have to state that um, this is, uh, this is a site for citizen scientists. So this is not something directly observed by scientists, like professional scientists, but because the reason you're able to use it is because it is a joint initiative with the California Academy of Sciences and the National Geographic Society. Um, so this is what makes it more, um, legitimate. So. How simple is this to use? Uh, so once you go to www.inaturalist.org, uh, what you can do first is go to explore. Um, so what you do there is you can start typing in, in location here. Um, I'm going to type in uh, Gowanus, and I'm going to select this right here. Kiwanis, Brooklyn, and you can do this for any of your waterways. You might have to focus on a street that's nearby your waterway, um, but that's totally fine. So now we have a map, a sectioned off map here of the Gowanus area, which of course includes the Gowanus Canal. And here are the latest sightings of different kinds of organisms, everything from plants like white winter ginger, to um, different kinds of fungi, uh, to um, different kinds of grasses, etc. right? So if let's say you are doing a project on um, indicator species, which is a species that's used normally by scientists to figure out whether or not a waterway is healthy, right? So what you do is once you have found your waterway on this map, go to species here. And actually, sorry, go to filters. That's much easier. And then you'll see a list of categories right here. So if you're going to focus on um, aquatic animals, then of course you select the fish right here. Um, you can also select these mollusks or uh, shellfish here if you want to. Um, I'm just going to select fish just for simplicity. And you can either do any observable dates, you can do exact, you can do a range, etc. I'm going to keep it simple and just go with any. And then you go here and you do update search. Now, now we have a list of different kinds of fish that have been observed in the Gowanus Canal by people. So the, just as a heads up, the fish that I always keep forgetting the name of, that's this one, the oyster toad fish. Um, it's a really interesting fish. It is, um, it looks kind of like a toad. So I'll just open it up for a second so we can see what it looks like. There you go. I've actually seen these in person because there is a water quality lab that's on the Hudson River and they have an oyster toad fish. These oyster toad fish, as a heads up, they can live in almost any kind of environment. So if you, if you find that there are toad fish, but no other kinds of fish like striped bass, for example, 
most likely that waterway is polluted. But that's a side note. But now that we are on the oyster toadfish, you will notice this graph right here. Here is the seasonality of the what has been observed in terms of toadfish, oyster toadfish. So this is from this year. So we have one that was verified by a scientist. It's research grade, which means it is you are able to use this in your own research. And this is the sightings here uh, from January all the way through December, um, I believe for 2019, not this year. Although the latest sightings was uh, yesterday, 2020. Here, you can go to the history and now you have um, history from 2010 all the way up to uh, 2000 and, uh, 2020 or 2020. Here we have a map of different sightings uh, all up and down the East Coast here. These are photos that were taken by people down here. And um, this is something that you can actually use in your own research. Life stage. This gives you information about uh, what kinds of sightings there were. So it looks like most of it in uh, the March through May category, they were adults. And then for the July through uh, October, it was juniors. And just one, one, etc. Uh, you can also look at the sex here. Um, clearly, it's harder to tell. Fish are hard to tell in terms of sex, but it's just to show you that this is the kind of information that's there. Now, how do you know it, what kind of water quality uh, this kind of fish likes, right? So what you can do is let's go to about. Usually people will link to Wikipedia or some kind of fairly legitimate resource um, to gain more information or share more information about that fish. Uh, there's also more information on this side here, but as you read through, you'll find that um, it's able to live in almost any kind of environment, which also means it can live in a um, low oxygen environment. If you need more information, uh, you can, for example, go to Google Scholar, and then it will give you a list here of all the different kinds of studies, etc. But like I said, I'll give you a heads up, oyster toadfish can live in almost, they can live in environments with as low as one part per million of dissolved oxygen. So let's go back. So what can, what is a water quality species? One is a striped bass. This can actually live, this needs to have a higher uh, water quality. Um, to, oh, I selected the wrong thing, sorry about that. Let's go back. Okay, here we go, striped bass. So striped bass do need to have at least four parts per million in order to survive. Here you can see the number of observations um, that are listed here. And you can see the history. You can see what has been observed uh, from 2010 onward. Um, the life stage, sex, etc. And like I said, this is something that you can use. You do have to make sure that you properly source your information. Um, and yeah, so go to about and you'll find information again on um, about these fish, et cetera, et cetera. So just a very quick tutorial. It's very simple. Um, I'll do actually one more. Um, so I know some of you are doing the Hudson River, and I know I tend to use the Gowanus Canal a lot. So let's go to location. We'll do Hudson. You can either do Greenway or the Waterfront Walk. 
doesn't really matter. Actually, do the Greenway because that's New York, Waterfront, Walkers, and Jersey. So let's do Hudson River Greenway. Uh, you can go to the filter and you can do fish. We'll add on uh, mollusks. And it doesn't seem to. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? Here we go amphibians. Let me just update the search. Okay, fine. So we have the genus Asipenser. I don't know. It looks like it's a kind of fish. So let's select this. Here we are. Again, you have the seasonality here. You have the history of sightings here. Um, life stage, sex, I won't go through all that because usually it's very difficult to tell. Um, and more information about the species. And this is a good way to see uh, if this kind of fish needs really good water quality or not. Um, yes, so there you go. Just a quick tutorial on how to find information uh, about your aquatic animal. It's very, very simple to do. Um, if you want to include this again, what you actually should do is probably do a screenshot. That's probably the easiest thing to do if you want to select um, this graph here. Um, there's probably other ways to do it, but the quick and dirty way is a screenshot. Okay.